Hi, this is Ahmad and welcome to Final 50, where I travel to the last 50 countries on Earth. And on this incredible journey, we are in the magnificent country of Mongolia, checking out everything that this country has on offer, including riding these beautiful camels, and this guy's fur is beautiful, and checking out the statue of Genghis Khan, the most famous man of these incredible lands. Now let's go see what this country has on offer. All right, buddy, let's go. Come on, chop, 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 chop. There we go. I am now in Dubai airport heading to my gate to make this flight to Mongolia. I think it's going to be a hell of an awesome experience out there and excited to see what Mongolia has to offer. Country 157, Mongolia. Check it out, Genghis Khan Airport. Woohoo! Well, let's see what this country has on offer. So this is super random, but years ago I invested in a company uh, called Medurva Health, uh, based out of California. They were a Y Combinator company, and I invested in them because I loved the team, I loved what they were doing. They're kind of like the Uber of medicine, and they also are developing different types of apps to help with wellness and preventative measures. So it turns out that one of the co-founders is Mongolian, and the back-end team is based here in Ulaanbaatar. So I came out here, and as part of my trip, I met with the team, and they showed me around, and now I'm coming in to do a quick meeting with uh, a very, very well-known hospital called Intermed here in Mongolia. So I'm gonna be meeting with them for business development purposes uh, and seeing kind of where that goes and hopefully help them out as a company. Now what's interesting here is that I was able to convince my friend to let some of his star employees, Maga and Baya Dalgor, take some time off of work to show me around the country. And what a game changer, because I was not only able to learn about the country and its epic history, but I also got to see the country through their eyes. All right, I'm here with my boy Maga, not that kind of Maga. <laughs> How do you pronounce your name? Mick Marjov. That's Mick Marjov, there you go. Right here in Mongolia, we are stopping on the way to the Golbi Desert. We started off right at the airport, right outside of Ulaanbaatar, and we've been driving for what, about two and a half, three hours, some crazy, crazy pop highways. But it's probably gonna get even worse on the way down. But it's exciting because we're gonna go to the Golbi Desert, see what the south is like, try to see some of those incredible camels, get a good experience, and then gun it back up north. And this poor guy got roped into this adventure, so. <laughs> Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I had always wanted to see the Gobi Desert, so Maga suggested that we drive to the outer part of the desert known as the Gobi Steps, a rockier desert terrain that appears so expansive and endless as far as the eyes can see. So tell me, Maga, what are these, what are we looking at? These kind of camels, what are they? They are Mongolian Bactrian Bech camels. Okay, and then you're saying that the top of the camel, the humps, the double hump, is made out of what? It's fat, yeah. Okay. So I thought Mongolians are crazy. <laughs> it, was a, it was a slight bad idea. <laughs> oh, thank God I didn't do it. Oh my God, this guy's crazy. Well, you know what? We had to try it once. Try to get on a wild camel and see what happens. Okay, <laughs> he survived. We both assumed that we're gonna be able to find accommodation super easy. Camp number one, booked out. Camp number two, booked out. Things are looking optimistic.
After we finally tracked down a gear for the night, we went hiking around the area to get a sense of the countryside and take it all in. Just thinking that this is Mongolia, almost as far away from anywhere I'd ever been to. And for a country this size, it only has a population of 3.5 million people. In fact, Mongolia is known to be the least densely populated country in the world. Later that day, we went to a place called the White Stupa nearby, which is in the Dungovi province in the Gobi Desert. It reminded me of places I'd seen in Central Asia and even looked like a mini Grand Canyon. But since it was a little overcrowded, we decided to instead come back the next day and see it at sunrise. But our day didn't end there because we were able to see an incredible sky full of shooting stars and Milky Ways. All right, woke up at sunrise to see the beautiful white stupa overlooking the whole Golby Steppe with this crazy guy. How's your back, buddy? I'd leave. He would. He has survived. Absolutely beautiful. Now the true magic of Mongolia was the people I met on that trip that brought the whole experience to life through their eyes. Those like Maga, Baidolgor, and others. Yeah, so tell me, why should people come to Mongolia? It's such an underrated country, I think, because it's so remote from the uh, rest of the world. It exactly lies at the heart of uh, Asia. And the culture of the people the nomadic lifestyle the marine corps, the music nature, we have the south in the south we have Gobi Desert in the north we have the Tara Altai Mountains, Hanga Mountains the nature is just amazing So this is Tirlij National Park, and as you can see, it is unbelievable. It's like a huge valley, kind of, that extends 20, 30 kilometers in this direction. And you can see over here, there's just, this almost feels endless, and it is absolutely stunning. What you see here is like yurts, or gears as they call them here, and hotels and resorts, and so people from Ulaanbaatar come out here for the weekend and really enjoy it, and it is just stunning. We decided to take a hike right here in the forested area of this national park. I mean, what can I say? Beautiful, untouched. There's no trails. You can literally carve your own trail. It just feels so like rugged and raw and authentic. And then you can see the town kind of right behind you over there, all behind you. Beautiful though, really, really. Just feels nice and you can also kind of feel it's a little bit crispy because autumn is hitting hard and winter is coming and let me tell you Mongolia gets cold what is fascinating about the country is that one-third of the population is still nomadic or semi-nomadic packing their camps each season and roaming the never-ending expanse of Mongolia whether they are in the deserts, steppes, grasslands, or high mountains, they are always roaming and have done so for centuries. So to think that 30% of Mongolia is semi-nomadic or nomadic in terms of population, that is just unbelievable. And you can see just in this background alone, kind of like a prototypical countryside landscape that you would find especially in the middle and north of Mongolia and it's just absolutely serene like you can hear a pin drop here so so beautiful so right there you guys can see there are some of the Prolansky horses these horses have two extra chromosomes than a regular horse and they're the truly the most probably the only wild horse really in existence they were almost extinct and then they reintroduce them to this exact park so this is the only place in the world that you can actually find them you can see them there just grazing but they're super protected they're so worried about them their natural predator being wolves but also you can see there's some up on the rocks there and there and you can see them right up on the top of the hill epic there they are got them Got them, they're all chilling. Even though most of these tourist villages tend to be very gimmicky, for some reason, Mongol nomads struck a chord with me. They showed so many facets of Mongolian life. 
in terms of how they live, eat and drink off the land, their companion animals, the way they migrate, and the music. Above all, the music. Just listen to the throat singing. That is one of the oldest forms of music and has originated from Mongolia and the surrounding region. So this is cow milk that's fermented right in there and then it's distilled right in here. They use dung to fire up this bad boy right in there and then in the end, you can see, that's all poop that fires it up. Talk about recyclable, perfect. And then it ends up looking like that. Uh, Hi, my name is Bayer Delgor and I live in Mongolia. So the three things that I think Mongolia is the most unique for First is meat. We have grass-fed organic meat from the animals who are just eating whatever they want around the country. And I think the Mongolian meat is the best. It tastes so much different, especially Gobi meat. They eat the best herbs that are most nutritious. So we can taste those nutritious herbs in the meat. And the second thing is the technology. I was so surprised how much the technology was modernized and developed um, in just a few years, in the last few years. And the third thing um, is the culture, especially the nomadic culture. For example, I moved to the US when I was 18. I miss my home, but it was not as difficult as for some people. We get adapted to things really easily. We live there, we move back when we want, we can move to another country. There are so many Mongolians all over the world and they get, get adapted to the culture and different places so easily. I think it's in the blood. All right, decided to come out and do a little bit of sightseeing at night. And it's nuts how the buildings are sprouting up here like crazy, which I'm finding out is because of the mining boom. Uh, the Chinese uh, basically are mining a whole bunch of minerals and stuff like that, it's, and especially coal. And Mongolia has one of the biggest deposits of coal in the world, untapped. I met Belgun through Bayad Dalgor and was immediately impressed by how motivated and how hard he worked to excel and pay for his education in the US. He returned with a dream of empowering the youth and spurring innovation as a means of ensuring a bright and equitable future for his ever evolving country. So I asked him what made him proud to be Mongolian. Hey you guys, this is Bill. So uh, I go by Bill or Bill Gun because my full name is Tok Bill Gun Darkishibat, which is 26 letters in English. And some people used to call me alphabet back in the States. You know, Mongolia is sandwiched between Russia and China. Now we are very much dependent on China, but somehow we are surviving. We stay as relatively democratic, our democracy is going strong and it's a process. We are all learning from it. And I think why I am proud of Mongolia is that we know this is a process that we should go through and we just acknowledge that and we have empathy for each other and uh, we really value what we have so far. So this is the monument of Genghis Khan, the ruler that presided over this whole area. In fact, he presided over the greatest in terms of landmass empire in history. A hundred million people are under his rule. It stretched and his children expanded it, but it stretched at one point from Poland all the way to South Korea, from the north of Siberia all the way south in China. I mean, it was an unbelievable empire and this guy did it. So they built the statue to honor him about 10, 15 years ago. Okay, so Genghis Khan behind me, this is a museum created for him because there's such reverence for Genghis Khan. And we've seen that throughout the country and different monuments that are shown here in the vlog. But what's amazing about this museum, it covers everything from all different parts of his history and the lineage and the successors that came through. But what's amazing about this guy, and here's a crazy fact, is 17 million people can trace their roots and origins to the genes of Genghis Khan. That is insane. But really an incredible museum right here in uh, Ulaanbaatar that covers everything from the culture, the history, the armies, uh, the topography, everything uh, during his reign and the different places that his successors operated in. 
movement. Everything was designed for the horse and for riding the horse, which are faster than a lot of horses out there in terms of they're small, they're nimble, they go farther distances and they're super fast. And so a lot of the armor, a lot of the material uh, and everything that they created really was designed for the horse, which was really their superpower uh, in terms of how they were able to occupy other countries. Religion in Mongolia has had a checkered past over the centuries. Under Genghis Khan, the country was largely enemies, where shamans ruled the lands. Later, after the Mongol invasion of China, the country slowly transformed into a Buddhist capital, where by the 1920s, one in three Mongolian men were monks, and the country boasted 750 monasteries and temples. Yet the Soviet-influenced Mongolian governments of the 20th century saw religion as a threat, and so the country moved far away from its past. By the 1990s, there were fewer than 10 temples left and just over 100 monks. All right, so we're here in the Chojin Temple, and it's right in the heart of the city, right in the middle of Ulaanbaatar. And the reason was that there was a very famous uh, priest of sorts who uh, was able, uh, through his own um, abilities to captivate the government and the people, that he got such, he was so revered that they allowed him to build this temple, as I said, right in the middle of this very bustling Ulaanbaatar city. So behind me is the Mongolian parliament, and they're expanding it from 76 seats to 126 so they can have more diversity in the parliament. Younger people, people uh, with physical challenges, people with um, diverse backgrounds, right? So they're trying to really expand it so they can create even more egalitarian systems within this very new nascent democracy here in Mongolia. And right there, in terms of nascence, you've got the historical figure of Genghis Khan kind of sitting overlooking the throne and overlooking the city. So really, really poignant in terms of kind of where uh, they were and where they want to go. I had always wanted to travel to Mongolia. As a history buff, I knew the power of the Mongols, who at one point controlled 22% of the known world. But so much has changed, and yet the people remained humble, proud, and optimistic for their future. And why wouldn't they be? With nature that makes you want to be an ad hoc camper, traditions that are awe-inspiring, food and music that is unlike you've ever encountered before, hospitality of a people that knows no bounds, and a rich, stored history that made them a superpower. And so I'm honored and fortunate to have seen so much and truly look forward to my next visit to the land of the blue sky. Well, I hope you enjoyed this incredible tour of the country of the eternal blue sky right here in Mongolia. There's so much to see and so much to do here, obviously including the incredible nature that has just blown me away and even seeing wild horses that only exist in Mongolia right up there on that hill. Have you ever been to Mongolia? Have you ever seen this incredible country? Is there anything I've missed that you suggest? Please post them in the comments below. I would love to hear about your own adventures. In the meantime, stay curious. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on my next trip.